former Pope Benedict XVI's body is lying in state at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome, where thousands are expected to pay their last respects. Brazil's President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva promises to end an era of devastation in a first day in office filled with symbolism. Thousands of people are expected to pay their respects to former Pope Benedict XVI as a period of lying in state begins ahead of his funeral on Thursday. Benedict's body was displayed on Sunday in a chapel of the Vatican Monastery where he'd lived, but from today will be on view in St. Peter's Basilica for those who wish to pay tribute to him in person. Catholics in Paris have given their opinion of the Pope, who broke with tradition and stood down due to poor health more than a decade ago. Benedict had a mixed reputation. He was regarded as an unrivaled theologian, but attracted critics for his failures to recognise and act on the scale of sexual abuse within the global Roman Catholic Church. He was nothing like John Paul II, this rector says. But succeeding John Paul II, what can you do? He did so humbly, like a man serving God's vineyard. He did it with what he had, his talents, notably his theology. I was always impressed. This might make you laugh. You always felt smarter when you were listening to him. He could make you understand the mystery of faith with simple words. I thought he was uh, too old-fashioned and not the right direction for the Catholic Church. But it's sad. He was the leader, so... Benedict's funeral will be held in St. Peter's Square and will be a simple, solemn and sober ceremony in keeping with his wishes. Passing on the presidential sash is officially the duty of the incumbent in Brazil. But on Sunday in the Brazilian capital, it was Amy Souza, a rubbish picker, who did the honours. With former Brazilian far-right leader Jair Bolsonaro snubbing the inauguration ceremony of his successor, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva's team had to break with tradition. And the new president took the opportunity to send an important message about what's to come. Estamos revogando os criminosos decretos de ampliação de acesso a armas e munições que tanta insegurança e tanto mal causaram às famílias brasileiras. Discontinuing most of the former administration's flagship policies is only part of Lula's mission in this, which is his third term as president of Brazil. A remarkable comeback for the veteran leftist who spent 580 days in jail before his conviction was annulled when he returned to the political fray last year. In his inauguration speech, he vowed to improve life for poor Brazilians, work toward racial and gender equality, and achieve zero deforestation in the Amazon rainforest, where destruction had surged in recent years. The challenges ahead for Lula are enormous. Not only will the Brazilian president have to rebuild a shattered economy, he will also have to convince about half of the electorate who didn't vote for him and who think he should be in prison and not at the presidential palace, that he can be their leader too. Annalise Borges in Florianópolis, southern Brazil, for Euronews. The Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, came under renewed shelling on Sunday night, according to the city's mayor. There were reports of explosions in the centre, but no indication of any casualties. It follows an earlier wave of Russian strikes on New Year's Day, when air raid sirens wailed across the country just after midnight, putting an end to New Year's celebrations, however muted. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said on Sunday night that his country's forces had downed 45 Iranian-built drones launched by Russia on the first day of 2023, showing that Ukraine's air defences were working. Russia's defence ministry said it had targeted a military industrial complex involved in the production of drones. U.S. think tank the Institute for the Study of War says Russian forces will struggle to keep pace on the front line as ammunition stocks are running low. It claims resources could dry up as early as March. Syrian authorities reported that Israel has fired missiles on Damascus airport, which killed two soldiers and wounded two others. Israel has been targeting airports and ports in Syria in an effort to prevent armed shipments from Iran to reach Tehran-backed groups.
So far, Israeli authorities have not commented on the incident. Australia and Canada have become the latest countries requiring a negative COVID test from people arriving from China. Over the weekend, France and Spain began checking arrivals from the country, which is seeing a surge of new infections. Now Australia says new measures are needed to track possible variants. What we know across Europe and North America and much of the world for that matter is that there are new variants emerging reasonably regularly, but they're essentially sub-variants of the Omicron family, which tragically Australians have been very familiar with for the last 12 months. It really is the key driver of waves around the world. And frankly, it appears to be the key driver of the wave that's underway in China right now. Around the world, 12 countries have announced anti-COVID measures on Chinese-based travelers since cases exploded there. That followed Beijing's sudden reversal of a zero-COVID policy based on localized lockdowns. Internal travel within China has also been impacted. The gambling hub of Macau is normally very busy this time of year, but so far numbers of visitors are significantly lower. As COVID-19 cases surge in China, European nations are tightening their security. From Sunday, travelers arriving in France from China have been required to wear a surgical mask and have agreed to undergo random PCR tests on arrival. France's Minister of Health and Prevention says this allows them to better monitor the disease. He told reporters that this control on arrival is not a control intended to prevent citizens from entering the territory but is a more scientific control that allows us to follow the different variants in a precise way. These are essentially Omicron variants that are currently in China. Amid mounting concern at the situation in China, Francois Braun says he wants other European countries to introduce similar practices. He said France is having a discussion at the European level this week to harmonize this model of care. The Spanish and Italians have already taken these measures, he said, as have the Americans. France will push this methodology to be adopted by all European Union countries. From Thursday, passengers from China will also have to present a negative PCR or antigen test from the last 48 hours. Since Beijing's zero COVID policy was lifted, hospitals have been overwhelmed with mostly elderly and vulnerable patients who have received little or no vaccination. Almost 46,000 migrants crossed the English Channel in 2022, overtaking the previous year's record by 60 percent. Official figures say the number illegally making the crossing in small boats has increased 150-fold over the last four years. One of the most concerning trends is that smugglers are packing more and more people aboard larger and larger dinghies sometimes with deadly consequences. In 2020, an average of 13 people were aboard each dinghy. Last year, that number rose as high as 45 people per boat. Venezuela and Colombia have reopened the last stretch of their shared border that had remained closed for years in a diplomatic dispute. It was partially closed seven years ago and completely blocked in 2019 when Venezuela's leader, Nicolas Maduro, broke off diplomatic ties after Colombia questioned his 2018 re-election, saying it was rigged. Both nations hoped to restart cross-border trade, which stood at 6.7 billion euros in 2008, but has collapsed since then. Sweden has taken over the rotating presidency of the Council of the European Union, continuing where the Czech government has left off. In his speech, the Swedish Prime Minister outlined the main issues, some of which include Russia's war against Ukraine and its effect on security and energy supplies for all of Europe. Other issues, such as climate change and migration, are likely to be put on the back burner, as Sweden's government is now supported by the country's far right for the first time. The Brazilian city of Santos is preparing to mourn football legend King Pele. Thousands of his fans are expected to gather at the local stadium before his remains will arrive to the final resting place of the city's Necropol Memorial. Born in 1940 as Edson Arantes do Nascimento, Pele was undisputedly one of the world's greatest sports superstars 
and the only football player in history to win three World Cups in 1958, 1962, and 1970.